Uh, good afternoon, uh, viewers and uh, listeners of Concerned uh, Citizens Media. Uh, thank you again for joining me. I always appreciate you sharing your time with me. Uh, so uh, I have uh, some news to share with you. Today uh, I will start with a United Nations uh, briefing on Somalia famine and drought. Uh, plus on uh, the situation in Ethiopia. Then uh, I will uh, continue uh, discussing and reading uh, other uh, news. Then I have also more videos uh, at the end of the reading material. Today is uh, September 2nd, uh, 2022. So thank you so much for coming back. Let's listen to uh, United Nations briefing on Somalia famine and uh, the situation in Ethiopia. Uh, this briefing was done yesterday, so let's listen to it, then I will continue to the other news. Thank you. General for Humanitarian Affairs, um, Martin Griffiths uh, started a mission to Somalia today. As you know, the country is bracing, bracing for its fifth consecutive failed rainy season over the coming months. An estimated one million Somalis have been displaced by the drought and more than 213,000 people face catastrophic food insecurity. There is an Im imminent risk of famine if crop and livestock productions fail, food prices uh, continue to rise and those most in need do not get paid. In Somalia, Mr. Griffiths will meet with affected communities, government officials, and partner organizations to support the urgent scale-up of the response. Aid groups on the ground are doing all they can to save lives and livelihoods. At the end of July, they had provided assistance to up to 5.3 million men, women, and children in Somalia. And in staying in the Horn of Africa in Ethiopia, our humanitarian colleagues are telling us that fighting continues in the north of the country, impacting civilians. There are reports of new displacement and increased humanitarian needs. We and our partners continue to provide humanitarian aid in the north, including in Afar, where more than 31,000 people were reached with food. More than 8,000 people have received health services since the 24th of August. In Tigray itself, 17 trucks of fertilizers were distributed um, this week to support farmers during the planting season. Also, more than 39,000 people in the northwestern zone received food assistance since last week. In Afar, tens of thousands of people have been displaced since last week from Yalo and Gulina districts bordering, in Tig bordering Tigray and from Chifra district bordering Amhara province due to the ongoing armed clashes we've been talking about. In Amhara itself, the situation is reported to be calm. In Desi town, following the movements of people who had arrived yesterday from other places in the region. A curfew is imposed on several towns in Amhara from 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. This impacts the movement of population, their access to emergency health services, and of course commercial activities. As for the roads uh, into Michele, they continue to be closed, uh, as well as the uh, air transport available to the UN continues to be uh, unaccessible. Uh, we continue to call on all parties to the conflict to take the constant care to spare civilians and civilian objects, including by allowing civilians to leave for safer areas in accordance with international humanitarian law, rapid and unimpeded humanitarian access to all those in need across northern Ethiopia remains critical. I think that's it. And on Yemen, the special envoy for Yemen hunts Ethiopian and Eric. Okay, uh, I have more videos later on. So the United Nations, as always, they are uh, paying attention uh, what is going on uh, uh, actually everywhere, uh, especially in a danger zone, a war conflict zone, uh, and uh, the situation with climate change. Uh, so they are following what is happening in Somalia, what's happening in Ethiopia, 
Yemen, everywhere. The, uh, the, mostly the, you know, they focus on uh, conflict uh, affected areas and the drought striking areas. But uh, when it comes to Ethiopia, nothing can be happened uh, uh, under uh, United Nations uh, uh, resolution because of China and uh, Russia siding with Ethiopia. So nothing can be achieved as long as Russia and China support Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. Uh, the United Nations had a meeting many times on Ethiopia but they couldn't come up with any resolution to stop the ongoing war. So that's a challenge. The challenge is Russia and China. Okay, uh, but they are following it. So I will follow it also. Uh, any updates uh, from there uh, will be shared with you. Uh, the Tigray Media House and the uh, or DW and other medias are accusing uh, Ethiopian Airlines uh, again in the same way uh, last time in 2020. So Ethiopian Airlines, the civilian airlines used by Ethiopian government by Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed to transport soldiers and weapons to the war front. So that is the accusation. And uh, this is the second time the Ethiopian Airlines, the civilian airlines, accused of, you know, conducting illegal operation against international aviation rules. So the Ethiopian Airlines is used to transport soldiers and uh, uh, military hardwares to the war front, uh, according to uh, the Grime Media House, DW, and other media uh, outlets. So this is a very serious accusation, and uh, it deserves additional investigation, additional investigation. Uh, the international media and other concerned uh, international organizations should pay attention if this is true and, uh, you know, uh, accountable. Uh, make accountable the Ethiopian airlines to uh, to be in line with aviation aviation uh, rules. So in the past, in 2020, uh, CNN and other major international news, uh, you know, raised this issue uh, with evidence. But this time, and no evidence is shown. But the accusation is. Uh, circulating on this social media so it, it it requires it needs further investigation by international media and uh, other uh, uh, concerned organizations about civilian aviation so this could be uh, very dangerous another time it could be targeted uh, by armed uh, uh, armed uh, groups thinking he might be transporting uh, military hardware or uh, soldiers. So it's a very serious business and uh, Ethiopian Airlines uh, should stop uh, conducting such illegal business. Uh, the other thing is uh, on the war, uh, uh, TDF, TDF is capturing so many thousands and thousands of Ethiopian soldiers. So many are surrendering, just like before. And uh, they lined up on the streets. And uh, they have on the YouTube video, you, you can see that uh, thousands, just within like a week war. And uh, TDF is really uh, well informed about international rules, conduct of rules, and they are treating these uh, thousands and thousands of Ethiopian soldiers and uh, giving them food, giving them uh, water, giving them uh, medical treatment. That's, that's uh, uh, you know, standard, international standard. After somebody surrender, that should be done. Uh, it's not like we witness uh, under uh, Amara militia or uh, Amara Fano, you know, who are brutally 
killing uh, soldiers, TDF soldiers and others after they surrender. So that is illegal. So the thousands and the thousands are in uh, in the under the control of TDF, including the uh, military general and other ranking officials. So, uh, despite despite uh, you know, the Gray region is smaller in size. Uh, despite all uh, squeezed from all directions, they are still resisting, and they are still uh, uh, capturing. Uh, uh, Ethiopian soldiers and uh, treating them very well. So that's a little bit update on the uh, war. And uh, let's continue also more on this issue. This one is from uh, Reuters News Agency on the conflict. Ethiopia, Eritrean troops clash with the Grand forces in the north. Allied Ethiopian and Eritrean government troops attacked Tigrayan forces on Thursday inside the northern Ethiopian region of Tigray, a Tigrayan military spokesperson said. At the latest flare-up in the conflict entered its second week, the Ethiopian government blamed the rebellious forces of the Tigray People Liberation Front (TPLF) for the new renewed violence, saying they had intensified their attacks. The conflict in northern Ethiopia, pitting federal forces and the Eritrean allies against the TPLF, which runs Tigray regional government, broke out in November 2020. Fighting resumed on, on August 24, breaking a ceasefire in place since March. The enemy having already relocated a massive force to Eritrea, has now begun a joint campaign with the foreign invading force of Eritrea, the Tigray military command said in a statement. It said the northern town of Adi Bayo had been attacked from four directions, while fighting was also ongoing in Tigray in Tigray's southern front. TPLF spokesman Geta Chorada spoke on Twitter of a massive four-pronged offensive around Adi Bayo. The Ethiopian government said intensified Tigrayan attacks were killing and displacing civilians and destroying property. It also accused the TPLF of diverting food aid meant for the hungry Tigrayans. The government statement didn't directly address the TPLF's allegation of a joint attack by Ethiopia and Eritrean troops in the northern Tigray. Eritrean ambassador to Kenya, Bayene Rusom, tweeted that Tigrayan forces were making a mistake and added victory to the Eritrean Defense Forces and the people of Eritrea is inevitable. Arrests resume. A Tigrayan lawyer in the Ethiopian capital Addis Ababa said he had received reports of dozens of arrests of ethnic Tigrayans, including clergy, since fighting resumed last week. Highly Hailu Kabada, Hailu Kabada, a senior Tigran opposition figure based in Addis, went missing on August 29 after leaving home to see a mechanic, a family member said. Relatives had checked police stations but couldn't locate him, and an unknown person had answered his phone, saying he was not available. Spokesmen for Addis Ababa police and uh, the federal police didn't respond to requests for comment on the alleged arrests or on Hailu's disappearance. 
During previous pivotal moments in the conflict, thousands of Tigrayan civilians have been rounded up and de detained with little food or, or medical care. Dozens died. The Ethiopian government said they were suspected of supporting the TPLF. Most of them were later released without charge. The conflict in Africa's second most populous country has killed thousands, displaced millions, and pushed parts of Tigray into famine. Almost all of the Tigray's 5.5 million people need food aid, but the latest round of violence has halted all humanitarian convoys. So, credit Reuters News Agency. That is already uh, thousands impacted uh, since uh, 2020. Now, instead of resolving, instead of helping the displaced, the hungry, uh, Abi Yamadis and his prosperity party with the help of Eritrean government waging a war again. Eritrea uh, still actively involved. Uh, it was told to get out but refused, refused, determined uh, to help Abi Yamad and to help himself. Is a, Eritrea is a dictator, really, is a dictator. And uh, a dictator is always fear of uh, the power, him you know, thinking about losing the power. That's why the two dictators are helping each other now. Uh, this is about the tragedy in the Shoah Robit. Uh, the mayor, the mayor is assassinated by unknown assass assailant. The Communication Bureau of Shoah Robit City, located in north central Ethiopia, north Shoah zone of the Amara regional state, said Wubishet Ayaleo, the mayor of the city, was shot and killed by unidentified assailant at the end of a busy day on Thursday. Uh, 01 September evening. He was about to get out of his car and uh, enter his house. Wubishet, married and a father of one girl and one boy, served the public in a different institutions in the administration from his use before he came before he came to Shoah Robit City Administration, the Bureau said. He worked hard to ensure that the city gets the development and status, status it deserves and that its residents fully benefited, the statement of condolence reads. The grief we have experienced is a very bitter and shocking. This sacrifice is the price paid for the lasting peace development and the unity of the people, it added. His funeral will be held today at St. Michael Church in Shoah Robit City at 12 p.m. local time in the presence of his friends and relatives. So the mayor of Shoah Robit assassinated by unknown killers. and. Uh, Credit again at this standard. <clears throat> Indiscriminate attacks leave dozens dead in the Horu, Horu Guduru Oromia. Witness blame Fano militias. In what? Survivors have described as an indiscriminate attack carried out on Tuesday, 30 August. Dozens of civilians were killed in Agamsa town, 
Am Amuru district, Horogudru Legazon, eyewitness who spoke to Addis Standard said, thousands more were more are displaced. The exact number of victims has been hard to come by, with online act activists stating as many as 61. A report by the W. Amaric stated that more than 55 civilians were killed in the attack. Getacho, name altered for security reasons, spoke with Addis Standard on details surrounding the attack. They attacked us at 7 a.m. in the early morning of Tuesday. People didn't have information at all. Some were walking, waking up. Some were leaving their houses to go look for, job, for work. And this was the scenario in which they opened fire on the people. Some hide in the corn fields and saved their own lives. The militants stole over 5,000 cattle. We have nothing to say. The shops, the, uh, even furniture was not spared. They militant loaded it onto their cars and left. He added, we have buried 63 bodies so far. There are those who were not able to bury. Even now, we are recovering bodies as we speak. The surviving people have been displaced. No one is left. No properties are left as well. The displaced have gone to Amuru. Even there, they are starving. Some have drowned. There are a lot of children who have been lost. Getacho blamed militants who call themselves Fano for the attacks. Further noting, Fano militants came over from Gojam. They are reined and armed there. There are many of them in Jar Jardaga, Jarte, and uh, Goma, Goman displacing many people from these places. Many have been moved into the cities, taking their belongings, belongings and cattle. Another witness who spoke to Addis Standard but didn't want to be named for fear of reprisal said that Agamsa town was temporarily controlled by some members of the Oromo Liberation Army, OLA, adding that there was no presence of security forces in the town currently. Referring to the suspected assailant, he also said the Fano militia had crossed over from the neighboring Kiramu district and attacked us. They were armed with advanced weaponry, including snipers and brain machine guns, then opened fire on unarmed civilians. He also stated that many people had died and there are still missing individuals. The source spoke that the Fanu militia had been behind the insecurity in the region since May. At least 80 cattle. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. No. Apologies for these technical issues. There we go. I'm sorry again. There we go. Okay. Apologies again.
the informant went further and accused the federal police and the defense force of exacerbating the already volatile situation, accusing defecting members from these security forces have joined the Fano, the ones in the jungles steal our cattle, while the others in the town fire bullets at us. Additionally, he said, 50 to 60 members of the federal security forces have joined the Fano from Agamsa alone. Many have been displaced and their cattle were stolen by these militants. People have come to Agamsa with their cattle from Hole, Billy, Wali, Lukuma, Migiri, George, Samo, Elamu, Nayare, Awo, Gofi, and the different places, the source said. When asked what the local administrative apparatus has done in response to such attacks, the CI answered, they are worried about staying in power and not the problems of the locality. Despite overwhelming reporting by several media and rights activists, so far there is no official statement both from the federal and the Oromia regional government. Addis Standard had, had previously reported that on the 12th of February 2022, 29 people had lost their lives in Botoro Bora village. Abe Dongoro district of Horoguduru Wolega zone. The attack also involved looting and burning of properties with 64 houses having been burned. One of the sources quoted in the forenamed Addis Standard report has stated Fano militants had murdered 20 women and children. Violence has been a sticking thorn in western uh, Oromia, more specifically in East Wollega and Horoguduru Wollega zone, exacerbated by increasing persisting, persisting intercommunal clashes and a conflict between the Oromo Liberation Army, OLA, which the government refers to as Shani and the federal plus regional government forces for the past three to four years. So that is terror, continued terror uh, in uh, Oromia region. And uh, the government uh, coordinated this attack and uh, Fano is taking advantage. They are heavily armed and they are attacking those uh, innocent civilians, unarmed women and the children. And the government has no uh, accountability on this. That's the problem. And uh, I reported on, uh, on uh, Agamsa last time. Agamsa in uh, the place mentioned here, it was taken by OLA, but for some reason, OLA left the area, <laughs> exposing these people to Fano militia and also government affiliated forces. It could be a revenge. It could be a revenge against these people. You know, uh, the government usually accuse residents like supporting OLA. So that's a tragedy. That's a tragedy. And it could be avoidable if oil stays there. If no federal force there, why they left after they occupied? As exposing the residents, you know, exposing the residents. They should have left some forces to control the situation. That it's unfortunate. Now, so many houses burned, so many uh, 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 people died, at least 60. 61 or 60 people died, and the more missing. And thanks to Fano terrorist group. They are terrorist group. Yeah. Never happened before.
now they they are allowed to cross anywhere and to kill Romans. <coughs> okay, this one is from Teachers Association. Ethiopia Teachers Association Civil Societies Coalition call for hostilities de-escalation continue humanitarian assistance. The Ethiopian Teacher Association called for de-escalation of conflict and uh, an immediate return to cessation of hostilities in the wake of the week-long resumption of militarized hostilities between Federal Defense Forces and the Tigrayan Forces. The association emphasized that such conflict plants no seed, plants no seed except for poverty uh, generational rifts and uh, historical accountability and uh, thus urgent action to break the spiral. Similarly, in a statement sent to Addis Standard, the Ethiopian Civil Societies Organization Coalition ECSOC expressed its grave concern about the resumption hostility. The coalition stated that the resumption of the militarized engagement would bear massive consequences for civilians, especially vulnerable segments of the population, namely children, disabled persons, the elderly, and women in the affected areas. Furthermore, both the association and the council stressed humanitarian assistance and the restoration of basic services for the affected civilian population in Tigray regional state and for such humanitarian assistance to continue without interruption. As part of a general call for all disputes within the country, including the war in the north, to be, res to be solved through non-violence discourse. The Teachers Association requested the Addis Ababa University and other international organizations to carry out, I mean AU, African Union, and other international organizations to carry out their role of collaboration to bring cessation of hostilities, including armed schemes. It also called for all militarized disputes within the country to be solved through nonviolence discourse. Parallel to this, ECSOC underscored that international mechanizations such as the African Union and others should discharge effort to enable the immediate an immediate cessation of hostilities without any preconditions. In this regard, the Council indicated it is readiness to dispense its own aid to see the end of the conflict. Militarized, militarized hostilities between the Federal Army and the Tigrayan forces re erupted on August 24 after a humanitarian truce declared by both lasted for six months. Both sides blame each other for commencing attacks against the other. The confrontation has escalated with the government The confrontation has escalated with the government blaming the grand forces of launching multiple war fronts. This week saw so, several towns and the cities across the Amara regional impose restriction and curfews in response to growing security tension. The resumption of the militarized hostilities has already been condemned by the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission multiple countries and institutions and their leaders including the United States, Turkey, United Nations Security General Antonio Guterres and uh, AU Chairperson Musafaki who have raised concern in regard to the situation and stressed a resumption of peace talks.
In a short statement released last night, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has called on the Ethiopian government and the TPLF to immediately halt military operation and the redoubled effort to bring a permanent end to the conflict. That is the end of the reading material. So I hope they will listen to uh, Teachers Union and the civil uh, societies plus uh, the, United, the United States uh, Secretary, State Secretary Antony Blinken and others and stop this bloody war and uh, come to the table uh, so that the United Nations can do the investigation not only on this one, but also on the past crimes and uh, uh, make Abi Yamed and uh, 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 all others involved in the planning of the war and uh, uh, all genocide and other atrocities carried out in Tigray and beyond. So the United Nations already set up the three uh, body team, uh, three individuals, or they are ready to go in and investigate what happened in Ethiopia. Uh, so this all you know, mess, this all round, second round of war created to prevent that investigation, I think. So the United Nations, African Union, uh, Ethiopians must uh, voice their voice, uh, must raise their voice to stop this bloody war so that we can figure out who is responsible, who can be taken into uh, international criminal court or if uh, a new court established in Ethiopia can be you know, used uh, to make these individuals accountable in that country. They are, uh, human life is very, very uh, uh, useless really. The killing, the destruction of properties, all kind of atrocities and burning human being alive is very, you know, became very common and nobody is accountable. The government, the federal government is not accountable. The Oromo, Oromo, Oromia regional government is not accountable. The Amara regional government is not accountable. Nobody is accountable. You can be arrested, you can be killed, you can be chopped into pieces or burned. Your property can be taken and no one is accounted for. No justice. We have the court, but these people cannot do anything. Uh, they are servants of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. They are no servant of the law. So that's... Uh, all I'm going to say, and uh, let's listen to uh, uh, other updates on video. Thank you again, and apologies for uh, some technical issues. Train forces on Thursday launched a massive joint offensive against the areas of Tigray bordering Eritrea. Ethiopia's Rebel Forces Command announced in a statement that after repositioning a massive military force in Eritrea, it has now launched a joint offensive with the invading forces of Eritrea against northern Tigray. The possible expansion of the conflict comes a day after a new air raid on the Tigrayan capital, Mekele, the second since hostilities resumed on August 24 in areas of the Amhara and Alpha regions surrounding the southeastern tip of Tigray. The Ethiopian government and rebels in the Tigray region accused each other on Wednesday of opening new fronts in northern Ethiopia. The rebel authorities said in the statement that the raid had caused light to serious injuries to civilians and material damage without further details. <laughs> Now, Safaricom Ethiopia has today rolled out a large-scale customer pilot of its network in the Harari region in Ethiopia, days after it rolled out its services in Diridawa, Ethiopia's largest city by population 
after Addis Ababa. Customers in Harare will be able to purchase SIM cards and choose their preferred numbers on Safaricom Ethiopia's 07 prefix. They will also be able to use data services, make calls and send SMS to Safaricom Ethiopia and Ethio Telecom customers and make international calls worldwide. Now, this is part of a city-by-city city rollout of its network and services after receiving the license to operate in the Ethiopian market in July 2021. It comes ahead of a national launch in October this year. Safaricom Ethiopia services are expected to be available in 25 cities by April 2023. Okay. The first U.S. ambassador to Sudan in nearly 25 years received his post at the U.S. Embassy on Wednesday. Ambassador John Goffrey expected to strengthen the relationship between the American and the Sudanese people and support their aspirations for freedom, peace, justice, and democratic transition, according to the embassy statement. In 1996, the U.S. closed its embassy in Khartoum after labeling the Arab country a state sponsor of terrorism for hosting al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden at the time. Washington reopened the embassy in 2002 with a diplomatic representation below the level of ambassador. In May 2020, Sudan appointed its first ambassador to Washington after 20 years of vacancy. Sudan has been in turmoil since last October when the military dismissed Prime Minister Abdel Hamdok's transitional government, a move decried by political forces as a military coup. Mark. So that's the updates I have on our videos on our reading. Thank you again for joining me. So that will conclude today's presentation. But uh, let me say this. Uh, further investigation is still needed on uh, the Grey Media House and the DW claim that the Ethiopian Airlines is uh, transporting uh, soldiers and uh, military hardwares to the war zone. So this should be investigated by international media uh, and all uh, other concerned organization. Uh, if this is true, it is against uh, aviation uh, rules. And uh, uh, we all should call on uh, Eritrean government to get out of Ethiopia's business. Stay away. Keep your democracy, your freedom for yourself. Uh, don't stretch your hand. You already, uh, your hand is already full of blood. Full of blood. And uh, you will be accounted for uh, when the times come. But for now, we should all call on Eritreans to get out of Ethiopia's business and call on uh, Prosperity Party officials and those warmongers to end these hostilities, come to the table and end, end the killing in Tigray, in Oromia, in other areas, and uh, create some, you know, uh, create a government that can be uh, accountable for the people, uh, that can work for peace and stability in that country. It's, it's a shame on Ethiopia, really, very shame. And uh, the majority of Ethiopians are still silent, still silent. Uh, they know what is going on in that country, but it's still silent. You don't see a demonstration like you see in Sudan or other uh, countries. I don't know why. Horrible situation in Ethiopia. You, whether the unemployment, inflation, conflict, so many other, so many other issues. But Ethiopians are still silent, except few, except few. Thank you for joining me. That's all I have for today. And uh, please be safe and uh, see you next time. So long, everyone.